Sometimes a sexy character can add an important element to a film, but sometimes we just have to ask, is it really necessary? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 needlessly sexualized female movie characters. For this list, we're looking at those big screen characters that were sexualized really for no reason. We're limiting our list to females, as the males deserve their own list. If that's a transform there from the Battle of Chicago, I need to know how it works. We're excluding those characters that assume the classic femme fatale role. as well as those characters that were intended to be extremely sexy. Come on, Roger, let's go home. I'll bake you a carrot cake. <laughs> Number 10, Lilu, the fifth element. Lilu. Sure, if we were building a woman, we may choose to model it after Mila Jovovich too, but this isn't weird science. In this sci-fi action flick, Jovovich plays Lilu one of the supreme beings in the universe. Me, fifth element, supreme being. Her main two outfits consist of a series of bandages that reveals more skin than they cover up, and a crop top with tight pants and suspenders that wrap around the crotch. Sorry, oh, I forgot about the auto wash. We get that you need a sexy female lead to play alongside Bruce Willis, but did her character really need to strip naked in front of everyone? I'd like to take a few pictures. Number nine. Ginger Knowles, Swordfish. I'm not what you think I am. This entry makes our list for one main reason. Halle Berry's topless scene. Morning. You mean afternoon? Sure. We're assuming audiences weren't complaining that they got to see Halle Berry topless, but was this really the movie that she should have done it in? The scene seems out of place with the rest of the film, an action crime thriller about a computer hacker and critics complained that the moment was only added to give Swordfish more buzz. Pretty shitty day so far, but it looks like it just got worse. At least she was paid an extra 500 grand. You don't like the situation? Walk away. Number eight, Christmas Jones, The World Is Not Enough. I pulled the plutonium out of the one inside. You can detonate the triggers now. Bond girls are supposed to be sexy and are often overly sexualized. We get that, but the world is not enough goes too far with Christmas Jones. Don't bother. Not interested in men. Take my word for it. She's a nuclear physicist who is tasked with assisting Bond on his mission to prevent a nuclear meltdown. Always wanted to have Christmas in Turkey. This character certainly could have provided more depth to the film than Bond girls of the past. That is, if she hadn't been played by Denise Richards. I thought Christmas only comes once a year. Richards, who won a Razzie for her performance, claimed that she liked the role because the character was brainy. So isn't it time you unwrapped your present? Maybe they should have chosen an actress who actually fit that description and isn't more known for being a wild thing instead. Number 7. Loana, One Million Years B.C. This adventure fantasy film had no intention of being historically accurate, as it portrayed dinosaurs living alongside humans. <laughs> that may be more believable than the appearance and attire of Loana, however, played by the stunning Raquel Welch. <laughs> Loana's raggedy clothes barely held her breasts in place, and her beautiful hair and long legs make her look less like a cave woman and more like a Victoria's Secret model. If you ask today, barely anyone would remember the plot of the film, but the majority of people would be able to recognize the iconic pinup poster. We know Andy Dufresne would. By 1966, right about the time Tommy was getting ready to take his exams, it was lovely Raquel. Number six. Princess Leia Organa, Star Wars Episode VI, Return of the Jedi. I don't know what you're talking about. Princess Leia was without a doubt everyone's fantasy girl when the original Star Wars trilogy hit the theaters. But for the first two films, George Lucas focused more on developing her character than exploiting her feminine image. What the hell are you doing? Somebody has to save our skins. Of course, he couldn't hold out forever, and we were given the famous gold bikini outfit in Return of the Jedi. Enough for one 
Well, this answered the prayers of every fanboy. It felt like a cheap exploit of a strong female character, one the film really didn't need. Come on, we gotta get out here. Number five, Natasha Romanoff, Black Widow, The Avengers. Who are you? Natasha Romanoff. Female characters in comic books are often exploited for their sexuality and depicted with large breasts that are barely held in by skin-tight leather outfits. Well, I made a name for myself. This is no different with Black Widow, also known as Natasha Romanoff. Gentlemen, you might want to step inside in a minute. It's gonna get a little hard to breathe. While the Avengers did seem like they toned down her sexuality a bit from the comics, they still gave her a tight leather number that seemed quite impractical for fighting aliens. We also couldn't help but notice that there are several shots throughout the film that seem to pause on her character just a bit too long. I'm in the middle of an interrogation. This moron is giving me everything. Number four, Tinkerbell, Peter Pan and Hook. It seems like fairies have always been depicted as gorgeous females, but we think that may have started with Disney's Peter Pan. Uh, sewing shadows, I mean. Sure, like many of Disney's female characters, Tinkerbell has an exaggerated hourglass figure, and that's accentuated with big blue eyes and bright blonde hair. We draw the line at her skimpy green dress, however in that it barely covers anything. While they may have slightly changed the look in Hook, Julia Roberts still reveals a ton of leg for what's supposed to be an innocent fairy. What fun we'll have again, what times, what great games! Number three, Lara Croft, Lara Croft Tomb Raider. I woke up this morning and I just hated everything. We place more of the blame on the video game industry than the filmmakers for this entry, but that doesn't make them any less guilty. And a lady should be modest. Yes, a lady should be modest. They had a chance to focus more on the intelligent and athletic side of the English archaeologist adventurer, but instead cast Angelina Jolie and made her wear a skin-tight top and short shorts. Stop! Jolie certainly has the acting chops to pull off a female action hero, but she was relegated to eye candy for this film. Number two, Lola Bunny, Space Jam. Hi, my name is Lola Bunny. Just because you don't have an obvious female lead in a film doesn't mean you have to turn a side character into an object of sexual desire, especially if that character is a bunny. I'd like to try out for the team. We're looking at you, Space Jam. Don't ever call me doll. Lola Bunny is sexualized for absolutely no reason in this flick, as she wears incredibly short shorts and a crop top that hangs off her body. The heartthrob of the hoops, Lola Bunny! Surely that can't meet the uniform standards in the basketball rulebook. Plus, she's a bunny. Ooh, she hot. What really makes it awkward is how everyone, including Michael Jordan, checks her out. That was the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. <laughs> Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I can open one up there, but I will need some help. Turn around. Now. Look at that disgusting display. Yes, sir. Number one. Michaela Baines, Transformers. You, you think I'm shallow? We get it. Megan Fox is hot. She also plays a character that's supposed to be in high school, which makes her the definition of jailbait in this film. It looks like your uh, your distributor cap's a little loose. While Michael Bay similarly oversexualizes Rosie Huntington Whiteley in Transformers: Dark of the Moon. Got it? Yes. See what I tell you? It's the bunny. <laughs> At least her character was of legal age. Look at the curves. Elegant, isn't it? Beautiful. Did Michaela Bain serve any purpose other than being a legal eye candy for the audience? Oh, God, I can't even tell you how much I'm not your little bunny. Remember that next time you look at the poster on your wall of her leaning over the car hood. You've got a high-rise double-pump carburetor. That's pretty impressive, Sam. Double-pump? 
It squirts the fuel in so you can go faster. Oh. Do you agree with our list? It's all just a business. Who do you think is the most needlessly sexualized movie character? I'll deal with you in a minute. For more exciting top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. A new world to call home. Thank <music> you.